All right, today we're going to talk about rocks. Rocks are naturally occurring solids uh, that are made of one or more minerals. One mineral would be monomineralic. Mono meaning one, so one mineral in the rock is a monomineralic rock. Um, sandstone, that's a good example of a monomineralic rock because it's just made out of quartz. Okay, um, right here's a piece of sandstone. The uh, sandstone, and it's not gonna focus for you, <laughs> But anyways, the sandstone, grains of sand in there, um, are just made of quartz. Polymineralic. Polymineralic is a rock that's going to be made of more than one mineral, and this would be a good example of that. You can see there's different pieces of rocks in there, um, so that's what makes it polymineralic, many minerals. And granite's another example of that. Um, that was not granite. That was a conglomerate that I showed you. And granite can contain, can, in different varying amounts of quartz, feldspar, hornblende, and mica. Now there's over 2,500 minerals that are uh, found in rocks. The rock forming minerals are the 90% of all of those minerals. They're, I mean, those are the rock forming, okay, I can't talk today. The rock forming minerals are the minerals that are found in 90% of all the rocks. Now these are mainly the minerals that are on the back of your reference tables. So those 20 that are on the back um, in your ESRT are a majority of those rock forming minerals. Now, there are three types of rocks, which I'm sure you've heard these before. We have sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous rocks. Sedimentary are the rocks that have not been, they haven't been melted, they're pieces of other rocks. Um, they have layers or fossils. They form from the burial and compaction of sediments or living things. Okay, so uh, these are just a lot of times pieces of other rocks. Um, I don't have a good piece of uh, coal over here to show you, I guess, with me, but only what we are doing for sedimentary rocks is we are taking, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this in my hand or not, but the uh, you take all these sediments and cement them together and turn them into a uh, rock similar to this, and you have a sedimentary rock. Now, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks, Mrs. Gates is going to go through and talk to you about that one later, um, but metamorphic rocks form from the recrystallization or from the heat and pressure of existing rock material. So if you take a sedimentary rock and expose it to a lot of heat and pressure, you're going to have a metamorphic rock. They display banding. Banding is a big thing with um, understanding that you have a metamorphic rock. If you see banding in it, which I'm trying to show you some banding um, pieces there, um, but these have not been melted. Okay, They have heat and pressure, but not enough heat and pressure to melt them. Okay, The igneous rocks, those are the ones that have been melted. They come from the cooling of magma or lava, and they're the solidification of that material. You will get, in igneous rocks, you're going to get scattered crystals. Okay, Here you have banded crystals. Um, glassy texture could be just very shiny and glassy. We'll talk about that later as well. Or vesicular, which just means that they have gas pockets. All right, so those are the three types of rocks that we have. And you're going to need to be able to identify which type you have when you see the particular rock. Now this right here is called the rock cycle. And it's called the rock cycle because the outside here, they just kind of cycle around. They don't have to follow that particular path though. Okay, if we start out with, I have no idea where you're gonna start out, okay? But if you have a sedimentary rock, if it undergoes heat and pressure, not enough to melt it, but if it undergoes heat and pressure, you're gonna have a metamorphic rock. Now, if that sedimentary rock did not turn into a metamorphic rock, but it just, gets melted, enough heat and pressure, well, just melting, not heat and pressure, because that would put it here in metamorphic. But if it gets melted and then it solidifies, you'll have an igneous rock. Now, same thing with the metamorphic rock here. Oh, sorry, I forgot one thing here. 
if you have a sedimentary rock and it gets broken into small pieces, sediments, then it could actually come back into a sedimentary rock. Each of these can go into the same type of rock or back to one of the other two rocks depending on which path it takes. Now, metamorphic rock, if a metamorphic rock undergoes heat and pressure, more heat and pressure than what it did originally, it can turn into another type of metamorphic rock. If it gets broken down into sediments, it'll become sedimentary. If it gets melted, it's going to become igneous. And um, same thing with the uh, igneous rock. Oh, I see that I forgot an arrow. So why don't you guys draw this in there. An igneous rock, if it remelts, it can turn into another type of metamorph. I mean, igneous rock. I'm having a lot of trouble speaking today. But anyways, if um, the igneous rock undergoes heat and pressure, heat and pressure will take it over to a metamorphic rock. If the igneous rock gets turned into sediments, it'll become the sediments and eventually turn into a sedimentary rock. So this is the rock cycle. Um, the rock cycle on your reference tables is much more detailed. Okay, This is the rock cycle. This is page uh, 6 on your reference tables. and um, But that has all of these words that I was just using. You know, compaction and cementing to turn into a sedimentary rock, heat and pressure for metamorphic rocks, and um, melting and solidification for igneous rocks. And you can follow this all the way around um, depending on what happens to your particular rock that you have. Now, your uh, page seven of your uh, reference tables, right here at the very top, that is your scheme for sedimentary rock identification. So what I'm gonna go through is talk about some of the things that are found on that reference table page. And so, sedimentary rocks. I underline sediment because that's what sedimentary rocks are. They come from sediments. They're sediments or small pieces that are cemented, compacted together. Um, being held together. They're the only rock type that can contain a fossil. If you have a fossil in the rock, it is a sedimentary rock. I'm going to sit here and tell you, you can occasionally, I've only ever seen it a couple times, you can have a metamorphic rock that does have a fossil in it, but I promise you that any rock that you see from us, that we give you, if it has a fossil in it, you can guarantee that it's a, meta I mean a sedimentary rock. Now, um, anyways, there's three types of sedimentary rocks. You have clastic, which are the pieces that I just showed you, those pieces of rocks and sand and stuff like that cemented together. So fragments, broken particles that get glued or lithified um, to form the rocks. They're compacted and cemented. Now, um, that's a very common sedimentary rock. You can have, for example, conglomerate. You can have a sandstone, okay? These are just sand grains in here cemented together. This one is bigger rock pieces along with some sand grains in there and all cemented together. Just different forms of classic sedimentary rocks. All right. Then you can have your chemical sedimentary rocks. Your chemical sedimentary rocks, I'm not going to show you one of them because you have already worked with them. Um, rock salt, rock gypsum, halite, gypsum, okay, rock gypsum, they're going to be your chemical um, sedimentary rocks because what happens is they're dissolved in the water the water evaporates because when the when you get evaporation that takes place the water goes up everything else is left behind and that leaves the mineral behind which is called an evaporite okay rock salt rock gypsum two examples of that okay they're just salt and gypsum now um, another way that this forms and some of you may have seen this if you have a wood stove at home and you put like a uh, pot of water on top of the wood stove and that sits there and evaporates all the water evaporates to humidify the air in the winter um, all those minerals that are left behind that's the minerals that are in the water okay depending on what type of minerals you have in your water are going to determine what minerals are left behind in that container um, as it sits there and evaporates all right your organic or bioclastic, okay? Um, those are the compression of dead plants and or animals. Bio, okay? They've been once living, all right? So uh, you have coal, which is the remains of dead plants. Typically, you get coal when you have a lot of large plants, trees. 
um, near the equator is a great example of that. Antarctica, Pennsylvania, they both were at the equator one time. Not at the same time, but they both were at the equator at some point in the Earth's history. And they've moved around. Obviously, you know, Pennsylvania is just a little bit south of us. We're not at the equator anymore. Um, I think that's very obvious with the winter we just had. And um, But anyways, so the um, if you have those plants, those trees that keep growing, and this happens on the equator typically because that's your tropical rainforest where you get a lot of vegetation growing very rapidly, and then trees die, they fall down on the forest floor, and they build up all these layers of these uh, dead trees, and that turns into coal when it turns into a rock and solidifies. Okay, limestone. Limestone's another example because limestone has a lot of fossils in it. And um, if you see a fossil in the rock, you're going to have an organic or a bioclastic rock. Okay, and what is a fossil? Well, a fossil is just the remains or the impression left by that plant and or animal. Typically, it's just the impression. Okay, now, um, just show you another example here. Right here. Tough to kind of see it, but right here where my uh, finger is pointing, yeah, but that's a shell. And when you see those fossils in the rock, that automatically tells you, okay, I've got an organic or a bioclastic rock. Now, in your reference tables, right here in your reference tables, this is, like I told you before, this is page 7. There, cleaned up a little bit. Right there's your clastic sedimentary rocks, fragmental. Now this, right here, you have your grain size, pebbles, cobbles, and or boulders embedded in sand, silt, and clay. Well, then uh, you go all the way over, you could have either a conglomerate or breccia. Now, it all depends on if they're rounded fragments, as it says right here in the comments. If they're rounded fragments, you're going to have a conglomerate. If you're angular, angular fragments, they're going to be a breccia or a brescia. Um, now, if you have just particles that are sand sized particles, okay, you're going to have sandstone. If you look at the sand right here and you go all the way to the other side of this chart, you can see that it says sandstone. Okay? Now, if you have silt sized particle, which is a little bit smaller, they give you the numbers right there on the chart. And that would be siltstone. Finer yet, you're going to have a clay. Let me just show you really quick what a clay looks like. Is This is a piece of uh, shale. And they're extremely, extremely fine particles. Okay, you almost need a microscope, magnifying glass to even see these particles, but they're very, very fine particles. And that's your shale. All right, moving on to the other parts on this uh, chart here. Now at the bottom, hopefully this focuses here in a second, you uh, get the chemically and or organically formed minerals or rocks. And the crystalline ones, if you have halite, you're going to have rock salt. If you have gypsum, you have rock gypsum. If you have dolomite, you're going to have dolostone. And then calcite can give you limestone. Now, if you look right here in the comments of that one, it says precipitates of biological origin or cemented shell fragments. If you see a fossil in there, you probably have, just go with limestone. Okay, limestone is the one that has the fossils in it. Typically the gray color, like I just showed you in that rock, um, and then there's another one called bituminous coal, very good for burning, and that can occasionally have fossils in it. Um, a lot of the ones that we have here do not have fossils in them, and, uh, but you can f sometimes find like a fern or you know, a leaf or something like that in the coal because it's compacted plant remains. All right, so we're going to go through and we'll show you these and you're going to have to identify them in class. Um, we're going to be doing, after we cover the sedimentary metamorphic and igneous rocks, we're going to be doing a lab on this. So, all right.